Are you okay? Is something wrong? Or can I help you? Those were the words that I desperately wanted to hear right before I catapulted myself over the rail. I have now lived 15 years past the day I should have died. When you see a lot of mental illness being expressed, that's a clue that the culture is sick, not the person. Hey, brother. Hello, Kevin. You were the first person to ever say, you know, Kevin, you should talk about this. Our guest, Kevin Hines, plummeted 200 feet but survived. Today, I travel the globe spreading a message of hope. Why? Because we know it helps people heal. There's a huge opportunity as we talk about stories of survival to support people who are out there who are in pain. I break down on a regular basis. I have symptoms every day. Um, I still have hallucinations, both auditory and visual. Thank you, Rockford, for coming out in full force tonight. I appreciate it and all of you. Give yourselves a round of applause first. Thank you very much. This isn't just my story. This is our story. I'm grateful for every millisecond I get to walk on this earth. But tonight, I'm grateful for all of you before I begin to share with you the depth of my story, there's something we have to do right here, right now, and together. We must take a moment of silence for all of those that we have lost to death by suicide from lethal emotional pain. In my short 37 years on this beautiful planet, I've now lost eight people I love to this pain. I share that pain with you. And I attempted myself, you know, in a very public way. I didn't do it because I wanted to die. I did it because I believed I had to. And those are two categorically different things. Let us take this moment right here, right now, as a moment of silence for all of those that we have lost this way let us hold their memories dear and solid and true. Let us never forget the light that exuded from within them when they were still here. And let us honor this evening their beautiful lives and their memories. And let us never forget to celebrate the beauty that they will always be right here. A moment of silence for all of those that we have lost this way. inside suicidal crisis that our thoughts don't have to own rule or define our next action we can always remain here i tell you that as someone living with personal and lived experience i fight the pain every day there are some days when i cannot i don't have cognitive function i can't speak i can't walk but yet i move forward somehow even incrementally in my mind and i tell you this because I know we're all looking for the story of how I went to the Golden Gate Bridge, jumped off and survived, but really that story is, is one, of, one of millions of stories of lived experience from around the world. And many of you in this room, all of you actually have powerful stories of surviving pain. Why? Because I'm looking into your eyes right now. I know you survived something just to get here today. How many of you, by an honest raise of hands, have survived pain to get to this seat right now? Exactly. I'm grateful. Thanks for being honest. Yes, I was 19 and I thought I had to die. But I stand before you a grown man trying to help you survive one moment at a time 
one day at a time. I just want you to be here tomorrow and every day after that. And if that means that you just get to the next 24 hours and then you restart, that's what that means. Because, and, and maybe you ask yourself, why? Why would I want to live through so much pain? Because there is value in finding a way to not let the pain defeat you. Let it build you brick by brick from the ground up. I let my pain build me. And I'm dealing with things in my mind today that I don't deal with every single waking day, but they're hard. And so today is a, a bit of a difficult struggle for me. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's life. We are human beings, and that means we are to err. That means we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall off the wagon. We're going to mess up. We're going to, we're, going to, we're going to fail at things. But your greatest failures can be turned around to your biggest successes. Nonetheless, on the day of my attempt, I want to tell you how I survived and why it matters to me to continue to, to live in this earth and to be here today and tomorrow and every day after that. When, I, when the bus got to the Golden Gate Bridge parking lot, and 100 people got off that bus with their fanny packs that were multicolored and zippered from the year 1987. And their foreign accents from all over the world. And their cameras your kids wouldn't understand because they weren't phones. And they get off that bus and I was the last person on it crying like a child, hoping, wishing and praying that one person would see my pain and say something kind. And one person said something, but it wasn't nice. The man to my left, as I cried and yelled the voices in my head before everyone got off that bus, turned to the fellow next to him and said, what the hell is wrong with that kid? But when I walked past that driver when there was just me and him, when I walked past that, past that driver looking right in his eyes as waterfalls fell from mine and mucus dripped from my nose, he motioned for me to get off the bus. I walked down those two steps that felt like 2,000. I walked across the two mile stretch of walkway that is the Golden Gate Bridge. They call it the ninth wonder of the world, the Golden Gate Bridge, which some express is the most beautiful man-made structure ever created. Clearly they haven't been to Rockford, okay? All right, what about that brew house, huh? And so, and I walked across for 40 minutes crying, four zero minutes crying like a baby. No one said anything. Bikers, joggers, tourists, runners, Police officers searching for suicidal people went by me twice. But to be fair, those officers had not been trained in prevention. They are today, and today those officers save 50 to 150 lives a year. Round of applause from right now. <laughs> Yesterday is history. Tomorrow's mystery. Today is our gift. Let us always and forever cherish this day and every waking and beautiful moment of this gorgeous gift we all get to call life. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening. I appreciate you all. Thank you guys.
Adrian, we have a problem that's in this country with our mental health system that is trying to fix itself when it's been fractured. And it's been fractured because people just keep taking funding out of our mental health system, out of our system. We, we, if we had adequate funding as we do for smallpox, who, who is dying of smallpox today? It has three times the funding as mental health and suicide prevention. So, so you're having the roughest time in this community, but so are, I, I travel around the world, I see that every community in every country, it, it, you're not alone in this, and I, I just, I applaud you for coming here tonight and for being bold enough to stand up and say what you said, because our, our mental health system is, is fractured, it is cracked and broken, and we need to fix it, and we need people like you to be bold enough to say exactly what you just said. That's not gonna solve, the, we're not gonna solve the problem tonight. I'm not gonna solve the problem with my presentation, but I am here for you if you need me, and these, those are my resources up on the board. We'll, we'll leave that up for people to go see at the end of the presentation. Those resources are helping a lot of people, and I hope that they can help you. That's what, what I'll say. The, the, the website, there are three free resources that we are giving to everyone. A toolkit to better their brain health on their own, because we cannot rely on a system that is broken. We have to work out. Yeah, sure. Do you want something to drink? No, no, thank you. Sure. But I appreciate because I know that you recognize the first responders and you only have issues with the first responders with mental wellness and whatever because of what they see and all the issues that they see. Yeah. Um, that, you know, I just appreciate you doing that. So I just wanted to just talk to you and stuff like that and your story is just, you know, I, I'm very proud of you. Thank you very yeah. much. So, yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, just, I know that you, you talked about that today, so it's very cool. Just wanted to meet you. That's you know, all. I just, uh, I, I, I worked with police and, and firefighters and, yeah. and EMTs and and the like for, for some time now, yeah. and um, it's 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 so tragic that 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 all of them are dying by suicide at the rate they are. Yeah. And, and that that I think uh, I, I'm uh, right now. My wife and I are working with certain foundations yeah. as well as the DoD yeah, to try sure. to find creative ways to think outside the box. Um, to mitigate this, which, which was really, really a crisis. Right. So no, it is. Um, I, well, you, I don't know. You talked with Brad, right? Brad Lindmark. I did. I yeah, this, yeah. This afternoon. Yeah. And his brother Greg was a very good friend of mine. Okay. You know, in fact, uh, you know, in one of the campaigns, he helped me out quite a bit. So it was pretty, and I was at the scene that day. So it was pretty oh, tough to boy. see. So yeah, but you know, but I know that again. I, I appreciate that you recognize that you know today and of course. Yeah. I, 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 it's important that we uh, we do. Yeah. And Dave uh, and I are uh, friends, and he was mentioning last night we were together, and he was mentioning that you were going to be here. And I'm glad I, you know, was able because I knew I couldn't make it today. Yeah. So. Well, I'm my grateful. apologies. No, again. no, no need to apologize. I'm, yeah. I'm grateful that you made the time this evening. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So good. Sheriff's done a lot of work in, within the jail to address mental health issues. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Uh, and we have a mental health court here. Yes. Where uh, I've been practicing in it since. I was a prosecutor. I'm, I'm a lawyer by trade, okay. and uh, so from the inception of mental health court, I've been a part of it. So I think it's been running 14 years, right, yeah. 13, 14 years now, yeah. and it is an amazing transition that you you take people that are as desperate as you've talked about, right, and bring them into the system, and then watch the transition because they're surrounded by a team of people that genuinely do care for them. You know, and that's 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 very important in their success in that type of program. That's the only way we can yeah. find success is if we, right. if we have a support network of individuals that are willing to listen to us, heed our pain, and help us move sure. forward. Exactly. So, so yeah, I went to the negotiation class with the FBI, mm -hmm. um, and you know we talked about um, just different cases. I think that we actually profiled your case, but there was another case. I think it was in San Diego, but they were talking about. I think you talked about that today about the active listening skills and develop the empathy and just learning how to speak with somebody that you know is really suffering bad like you said yeah. with um whatever the, whatever the issues they feel in the, inside their minds is not necessarily true and they're trying to negotiate so they don't do that fatal jump or whatever and you know it just struck me that when i talked with you you know we're listening to you and then what you said today because oh shay and i are good friends and the fire chief and i are good friends so we talked so. good well, 
I'm, I'm, I'm very yeah. grateful. And anyway, anyway, the Kevin and Margaret Hines Foundation can help going yeah. forward. No, I Would appreciate you let me, it. Let me yeah, know. I appreciate you know, we'd, it. We'd be glad to try to help. Like you said, the statistics, I, the staff that I have is 360 to 400 um, men and women that uh, work in corrections, courthouse security, patrol, okay. um, detective bureau, and they see horrific things. And I know there is a, there has to be, a, like you say tonight, two or three that are contemplating suicide, and hopefully we can get to them before they do that. We actually, uh, a, a, a woman approached before I came down here uh, and said that she brought her, I think she said her god niece or something, yeah. who was one of those individuals, and, and, that, and that she left saying that she wasn't going to tonight. Excellent. So, so beautiful. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time to come. Thank you very much. Story. Yeah, appreciate very nice it. meeting you. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Kevin, it was right. an inspiring message. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, you do. Yeah.